Hello there, Ray here, and welcome back to the Farm Everything series, where I attempt to make a farm for every single item in the game of Minecraft. We are currently over 90% of the way to completion, and I'll have my document here linked down below, so you can see how I design each farm, and even put them into your very own worlds. Recently, I was nominated as Best Redstone Engineer. I really have a lot of fun designing these farms, so if you enjoy them, make sure to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe. In today's video, I will be doing tutorials on how to build up all five of these efficient and simple farms, which will get you every single flower type, including the tall flowers, as well as the automatic farm for every single die through the addition of cactus, cocoa bean, and sea pickle farms. Since I already covered wither roses as well as black dye farms in these videos here, I will not cover them in this video. First we'll look at the general flower farm, then we'll look at the tall flowers, then the cocoa bean, then sea pickles, and lastly cactus. Use the chapters to navigate the video. The item lists are in the pinned comment, and the world download and schematics are in the description. Now I'll show you guys how to build this simple flower farm which can be used to get most flower types. This farm runs efficiently in flower forest and plains, it uses bone mill to run and works as long as it's being loaded. My general flower farm can do all of these flower types up to this one. And this will produce you the dyes of blue, white, yellow, light blue, light gray, red, pink, orange, and magenta. So first you want to find yourself a flower forest because this is where you can get the majority of the flower types. Then you want to bone mill the ground to see what type of flowers are being produced in the area. In a flower forest, the flowers will always be the same type in the same area. And the order in which they appear is kind of like a ladder where you start out at dandelions, then you climb your way up to roses, then eliums, then azurettes. Then we got the tulips, the red, the orange, then the white, then pink, then the daisies, then the cornflowers. And then at the very far spectrum is the lily of the valley. So if you're trying to find a special type, you can use the current type that's around you to try to figure out where the next one could possibly be at. So bone mill until you find two types that are beside each other that you want to farm. And what we'll do is we're going to build a farm between both of these types. So we're going to start out right between the two different types and we're going to place in a dropper facing upwards and then we're going to have a dispenser on top of that facing upwards. We'll then have a hopper pointing into the bottom dropper and another one pointing to there. This is where we're going to put in the bone mill in these containers here. You can connect this however you want. And the bone mill will go into the dropper and eventually into the dispenser. Then we're going to come on this side of the dispenser and we're going to place in a torch facing it. Now we'll place in some blocks. This is going to be used to create delay to operate our entire contraption. We're going to have a block here as well as here. And a full delay repeater pointing into that one. And a three delay repeater into that one. Then we're going to place redstone right here. On the opposite side of this, we're going to place in another repeater on full delay. Then we're going to place in a block here and a comparator in subtraction mode with a lever over here that is on. This is going to go into a block and then we're going to have redstone dust here as well as here. And this creates a clock. Now going out of this side, we're going to attach our redstone to the rest of the farm. So place in blocks like this. Then we're going to do a full delay repeater and a to delay one. Then we're going to shift click and block on top of that and we'll put a slab right here. It's a top slab with redstone dust on top of all three of these. And then this lever here is your on and off switch. Now you completed all the redstone, you just have to place in the grass part of the farm. So going back to the suspenser, we're going to place a grass block on top. Then we're going to go three direction this way with grass and also three this direction. Then we're also going to go out five this direction as well as five on this side. Now go ahead and fill in this cross area. So now it looks like this. Now the side here that's near the redstone we're going to place in a row of blocks. Then we're going to come up and over just like here and we're going to place in a row of solid blocks all the way across. Now we're also going to place in blocks on either side, this side as well as on this side. Just like this. Now we're going to come in and take this down to here and row blocks across this entire thing and take it back up again like that. Then we're going to come in and place in a, another row blocks on this side here all the way across as well. Now I place in water on either side here and in the very center where the water looks like it's just stopped. This is where we're going to knock out a block this is where we're going to place in our chest like that and then we're going to place in the hopper on top of that that's also going to cut off the water so now it should look like this now we come into the back side over here and we place in water source every two or ice and we break those to so make sources all the way across then we could come in and place in trap doors facing this way that way when they're open they're going to prevent the water from leaving this area 
Now we just need to connect this redstone with a redstone line that goes across all of these blocks where the trapdoors are at. And we go ahead and flick the on switch and we can watch it close as well as open. And just like that you can see that it's bone milling and then it's opening and watching all of the flowers and vegetation off into our water stream over here which is being put into our chest. As we built this one between the orange and the red tulips, we get both those variations. Then you just want to build one of these farms in between every two different types that you want to collect. With a decent sized flower forest, you should be able to get almost every single type of flower here. With each of these machines doing two different types, you'll need to build between five and six of these in order to get all flower types in this biome. The one flower you won't be able to get is the blue orchids, so you need to build one of these in a swamp biome in order to get the orchids. Now I will do the block tutorial for the two tall flowers. The tall flower farm produces these four types, which makes colors red, yellow, pink, and magenta. This farm can be built mostly anywhere and uses bone mill. So first we're going to place down four chests with spaces in between, then we're going to place in four hoppers, each hopper is putting into a different chest. We're then going to place a block in the center, then place in a dirt on top of each of the hoppers, and a water source in the center. Then go ahead and hoe each of these. This lets you place two tall flowers on top, while anything that lands on top will still be able to be picked up by the hopper underneath and placed into the chest. Now go ahead and place your two tall flowers on each of these so they're all separate. Now to prevent the items from falling into the wrong hoppers, we're going to go ahead and place in blocks around all of these. You can use trapdoors on these outside ones for a thinner look. Now you can come in here and place in a temporary block here and then we're going to place in dispensers facing downwards onto each of the flowers. So one goes there, we're going to have one right over here and then we'll also place a temporary block there to place in the dispensers for this one as well as that one. Now you can come back and fill in that block there and then place in a solid block here and remove these two blocks. Now we're going to place a hopper that faces into each of the dispensers on their own. Then we're going to place a double chest over top of one of the hoppers and one of the dispensers nearby. This is where you can put in your bone mill and then the bone mill is going to feed into the dispensers to bone mill the two tall flowers. Now we're going to place a sticky piston on one side of this and then we're going to have an observer that is facing upwards on top of it. Now we have to place another observer at the bottom of this one. We want it to face downwards. I'm just going to temporarily remove these two blocks and then come in here and make sure it's facing directly downwards and then place these back in again. Now we go ahead and place our lever on the back side of this and power this to turn it off. Now all you have to do is come in and manually put the bone mill in to the top chest or you can have this hooked up to your bone mill farm. Then when you go ahead and flick the switch, it's going to bone mill two tall flowers. They're going to get picked up and placed into their respective chest. You will use less bone mill if you get your dyes from a general flower farm rather than getting them from the tall flowers. But this farm is more convenient. So now we're going to do the tutorial on the simple cocoa bean farm. This farm can be built anywhere and uses bone mill as well as the AFK player. We'll start by putting down a chest where all the cocoa beans are going to end up. We're going to have a hopper that puts them in there. We're then going to put in some temporary blocks here and here. And we're going to put in a dispenser pointing inwards there and there. That's going to be used to bone mill the cocoa bean. Then we're going to have one hopper point to that one and one to this one. And these are going to be used to supply the bone mill, which is going to be stored on top in a chest. And you got to make sure to use a barrel here. Then put a redstone dust there. And we're going to place in an observer that is top of this dispenser pointing into this barrel here. Then we're also going to place an observer pointing the opposite direction. So it's going to make a clock like this. Now we're going to place in a jungle log right here and a lever there. Then we're going to stick a sticky piston on top of this lever here facing the observer. This is going to be a little bit tricky to do. So you can place down spacer blocks if you want to. Now all we do is power this and unpower it and that will turn it off. And lastly we come down here and place in a normal piston facing downwards onto the center here. So after you place bone mill in each of these two containers then you come in with your cocoa bean and hit the switch to turn it on and then you just face this side here and hold down right click. If it's not working or if you're not getting multiple cocoa beans just stop holding down right click and try again and then you'll eventually get it so that you can constantly see it growing up. Now you just do F3 plus T and then release the right click button that you held, held down as well as the two other buttons. Now your player will automatically plant in the cocoa bean without you having to press down any buttons on your keyboard or mouse. Then to stop it just hit right click once again. If you AFK this for a long your time make sure you have room in your inventory so you can pick up all the beans and now the cocoa beans you can convert that into the brown dye now i'll show you guys how to build my bass sea pickle farm this farm can be built mostly anywhere and uses bone mill 
Start by placing down four chests like this. You need quite a few because it does produce a lot of items per hour. Then place hoppers pointing into each of them. Now place blocks on top of the hopper with rails on top of that. And then place in hopper minecarts and break it and let them fall into place. And you notice that that side as well as this side, the hopper minecarts push each other a little bit. That's okay. So in the end, it should look like this. Now we're going to place blocks on the sides of these carts here. This is used to hold in the upcoming water. Now we're going to place in two tall worth of blocks outside of each of the green glass we placed down below. Now after looking like this, we're going to come in and close off the ends. Over here where there is minecarts hanging over the edge, you could just do the two top pieces. And now it looks like this. Now place trap doors over top of each of these hopper minecarts, including here in the center. And then another trap door on top of that one. Now we're going to come in and place in slabs in each of these corners here. This is where we're going to have the water and keep the items out. Now we can waterlog each of these slabs, as well as make sure the center trap door is waterlogged. Now we can come in and place in coral in the empty gaps that are around these waterlog blocks and it shouldn't die. Now we're going to place in a hopper minecart in the center to pick up the items that are going to fall in there. We'll just push it in just like that. And we'll top it off by putting a coral on top of that. Now we come in and place chest in each of these corners on top of the slabs. And this is going to keep the items from falling over there. And we're going to water log it. So it produces water throughout the rest of this place where sea pickles can then grow. Now we're going to come in with some spacer blocks. And we're going to place in our dispenser pointing downwards onto this area here. Where we'll have our initial sea pickles. Then make sure to waterlog these sea pickles. Now we need to place in a layer of pistons. Now we'll place in a trapdoor here and we're going to use that to place in the pistons which is the same Y level as the trapdoor and we're going to come along the edge here and click up against the side. Also remove the trapdoors we put in a piston and then we're going to put pistons around the hole outside of this. When you place in the last piston like this, you can break your way out just by going through something like this. But now this is what it should look like. All these pistons are facing downwards. This is the dispenser facing downwards. Now we're going to place solid blocks on top of each of these pistons around the outside edge. And then top slabs in between them. Then pointing into this dispenser, we're going to have a hopper as well as a chest. This is where you're going to put in your bone milk to run the farm. Now you can have a repeater pointing to that hopper on two redstone ticks and a solid block behind it. Now we're going to have top slabs on either side of that and we're going to fill the rest of this whole top area here in with redstone dust. This is going to be used to power the pistons down below which when they extend will break off the excess sea pickles. Now we're going to come in and place solid blocks above this redstone here and then we're going to come in and place an observer pointing downwards into this solid block. Then we'll put a repeater on two ticks over here and a repeater over here with two ticks as well. This repeater is going to be pointed to a solid block and then we're going to have redstone here as well as here. Then we're going to place in a, another block here with a lever that's powered and a comparator here that is on subtraction mode. So this lever is on and off for the farm and you can see now it produces sea pickles and then they get squished into the ground and eventually get picked up by the hopper minecarts and hoppers and end up in the chest. Then you just pipe your sea pickles into a furnace and you can automate the process by using my moss farm in order to get infinite fuel. And this furnace also provides infinite amount of XP's plus you get to your lime dye. Next, I'll show you guys how to build my simple cactus farm for green dye or to smelt down for XP. The cactus farm can be built anywhere as long as the player is loading it. First, we're going to have a nice clear area to build. Then we're going to place in 15 blocks on four different sides. This will allow us to hold in the water. You can use whatever blocks you want to build it. I'm using glass so we can see through it. Then we place in a water source in all four corners. This water is going to be used to wash all the items into the center. Now the area that is not full of water, go ahead and remove the blocks that are inside the center. Now it will look like this. Now we come in and remove these edge blocks right here. This way the water will flow towards the center. We do this on all four sides. And this lets the water sources from the outside go all the way to the very center so we can collect all the items in one location. Now it should look like this with all the flows going right here. We can go ahead and knock this out. This is where we want to put in our chest and we'll go ahead and remove that block and place a hopper here to automatically collect the items. Then we can come in and place in a block so we can open up the chest from underneath. Now what we'll need to do is come in two blocks from each of these sides and place a temporary block right there with a permanent block on top of it. 
This is where we're going to place in our first sand and cactus. Now we're going to continue this all the way across this entire thing, staying two blocks away from the edges here as well. Now we come in and place in our sand every other one with the cactus as well. Now we'll continue this pattern over top of all of this water. To make it easier, you can first come in and place in each of the rows and then later come in and place in each of the sand as well as each of the cactus. When completed, it should look like this. Notice that we have this two gap of water here. It allows the cactus items to be able to fall out and picked up by the water without needing to have any solid walls. Now I just come in and remove the blocks in between which are used for scaffolding. Now it looks like this here. Now what we'll do is place in some temporary blocks over top of these. Then place in our open gates right beside this. This way each gate will break off two different cactus. Now we can come in and remove our scaffolding blocks. We'll also do the same thing to the opposite side. Now lastly, we'll come here to the center and put in another row of scaffolding as well as gates. And that's all you need for a single row. You can add as many rows as you need. The next row would start right here with the sand and cactus. And you can go as high as you want and the cactus that pop off will still be able to fall with the inside of this water right here. Keep in mind the cactus farm only runs if it's within a 130 block radius around the player. So a general rule is if you can see it then it's probably running. Now all the cactus will be moved into the center, picked up by the hopper, then put into whatever chest you want to. You can also directly put your cactus into a furnace and have it smelted down into dye. And you can fuel this using my moss farm which you can learn about here. This also provides passive XP being stored inside its furnace. And with that you just completed the last farm in order to get every single flower type as well as a dye type in the game. Now check out this playlist to see how I am designing a farm for every item in the game of Minecraft. Or this playlist all about weird glitches I came across in the over 12 years of playing this game. If you'd like to see the hours and hours it takes to design all of these different farms, make sure to check out my live streams which are every Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks so much guys for all the support and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!